a little bit of sad news. Um, the founder of the Vanguard Group, uh, Jack Bogle, passed away last week. Probably by the time this video comes out, it'll be about a week since he uh, passed away. You know, Jack Bogle was a very influential uh, figure in the whole financial ball game. He changed uh, so much uh, about the industry. And uh, this is kind of a video uh, for him. Uh, he was the founder of the Vanguard Group, and that's actually a company that I've worked for. The Vanguard Group is actually the largest provider of mutual funds, as well as uh, a large, uh, I think it's the second largest provider of exchange traded funds. In regards to my long-term investments, a lot of them are um, geared towards uh, Vanguard products. I'm a huge fan of Vanguard products as well as uh, Jack's work. I feel like he has done a lot for the industry. If you take a look at uh, Jack Bogle's thesis, for instance, he wrote a thesis in his undergraduate experience at Princeton University. And uh, essentially, the Vanguard group was founded on that principle. And that principle is basically stating that your typical fund manager is not going to beat the market in the long run. You know, he might have a couple of years where he beats the market but he's oftentimes not gonna beat the market in the long run. The issue is most fund managers charge you 2% fees, at least now. Now if you park your money in a hedge fund, the fees could be anywhere from one to 4%. Common fee is about 2%. Plus, a lot of the really good hedge funds to be a part of often times charge you an additional fee on the alpha of your money. So uh, what, what does alpha mean? So uh, essentially, let's say um, you, you're invested in a fund that tracks close to the S&P 500. If the S&P does 7% this year, they somehow manage to do 11%, they might charge you an additional 20% fee on the alpha or the difference between their 11%. Let's say the S&P only gave you a $70,000 return based on their 7% return but they made you a $110,000 return, they're gonna charge you alpha on the difference of uh, 40,000 in this case, of 20% of that money. Jack Bogle's thesis was essentially stating that, okay, they might win a couple of years over the market, but in the long run, very few fund managers can beat the market. And when you include the fact all these additional fees that take place on, on the years that they might do better, as well as a 2% management fee, perhaps it's not that great of uh, an investment to keep your money in you know, an actively managed fund. Very sad news to share with you tonight. John Bogle, the founder of Vanguard, has passed away at the age of 89. In 1975, Jack Bogle started the Vanguard Group, and with it, a new way of investing. Jack uh, was uh, the creator, effectively, of, of the index funds. Index funds, mutual funds whose portfolios match a market barometer like the S&P 500, are commonplace today. But they were unheard of in the 1970s, much less the early 1950s, when Bogle wrote his senior thesis about the concept at Princeton. Essentially, uh, Jack Bogle created a firm that um, is going to track the market, but the whole basis of the firm is not to actually charge you uh, exorbitant management fees. That 2% fee really adds up over the long run. If you keep getting charged that 2% fee year after year, after a decade, that's a lot of money that you've lost in management fees. After two decades, after three decades, that's a lot of money that's out the door in fees. Jack Bogle created this, uh, this structure, this very, very low cost mutual fund where essentially, uh, I, I think uh, the fund that I'm a part of in Vanguard that I am invested in has a 0.3% fee. I think they have funds even lower. You just have to have a little bit more money than I do uh, in Vanguard. His thesis was over the long run, hey, listen, I'm not gonna make you false promises of beating the market year after year after year. There are other firms that are gonna do that. I'm just gonna get you uh, a very diversified portfolio and I'm gonna charge you a very low rate for doing that. When the Vanguard Group first started, they were actually having a lot of bad traction. If you're gonna have a fund that has such a low fee, you probably need a lot more assets under management. Why? Because if you only have a million dollars under management and your fee is 0.3%, that is what, oh my goodness, my brain's off. That's what, $3,000?
Yeah, that's $3,000. You can't pay your employees with $3,000. 10 million or 11 million, that's still not a lot of money, uh, I mean, to, to, you know, to pay your workers and things like that. So you need a lot of assets under management. Some other things that made it slow was Vanguard wasn't spending that much money on advertising at the time. And also brokers didn't really wanna sell their customers on the Vanguard group because the Vanguard group wasn't really offering good fees to the brokers to sell these mutual funds for. Over time, you know, the company did grow to a very large company. They have, I think, $5.1 trillion of assets under management under the thesis that very few managers can beat the market over the long run. I think this is a very important concept for a lot of people to understand monetarily. You'll see on my channel that I'm day trading with 40, 50,000. I have five other brokerage accounts that I directly trade under. Overall, I, I do day trade a lot and I am able to make some, some money doing so. But let's say I have a very large retirement nest egg, 10, 20, 30 million dollars. It's gonna be much more more difficult to go in and out of the market uh, with that kind of money. The strategies I use to day trade are going to be much more difficult to apply. Realistically speaking, I don't think I have the skill set myself to beat the market in the long run with that kind of money. I'm not talking, uh, you know, one million, two million dollars. I mean hundreds of millions of dollars. And I do agree with the sentiment, very few fund managers can beat the market in the long run. If you take a look at, uh, you know, David Einhorn, his green light capital, he had very successful many years. Ultimately, what this allowed him to do was get a lot more assets under management. And when you have a lot of assets under management, that 2% management fee and, you know, all the extra money you might be charging on your alpha, that adds up a lot, and that's what the fund managers use to make money. If you take a look at David Einhorn's Greenlight Capital, it's exactly kind of what Jack Bogle alluded to. Uh, Warren Buffett says, says the same thing. Uh, he's had two years where he has had devastating losses, enormous amount of redemptions, and um, you know situations where people are just pulling their money uh, out of the firm. So let's actually even think about the comparison of fees between a hedge fund who has uh, an average fee of one to 4%, usually somewhere around 2% is where you'll find it, versus the Vanguard group at 0.3% is the fund that I'm in. If you take a look on $50,000, you're only paying $150 fee to Vanguard to basically keep a diversified portfolio kind of built for you as a part of their fund. I mean, it's considerably um, a hard thing to do unless you have a lot of money already yourself to build a diversified portfolio. Now, let's consider an active managed fund whose average fee is two, uh, you know, two percent. You're spending a thousand dollars of that fifty thousand dollars just in management fees. You know, if they make money or lose money that year, that fee you still lose, and over decades. That's a lot of money if you think about it. Over decades, that's really gonna add up. So let's go into why I keep my money with the Vanguard Group. Like I said, I don't manage all of my money. Um, I manage actually quite a bit of it though, <laughs> but I don't manage all of it. Now, uh, a lot of people don't realize this about me and this is probably because I don't have any subscribers, but uh, I actually work in the tech industry and I am a programmer in the tech industry and uh, I had the pleasure of being a programmer for multiple different financial companies. I've worked for hedge funds, investment banks, banks, as well as uh, I had also worked in Vanguard group for about a year and a half. It was actually one of my earlier jobs and uh, I enjoyed my experience uh, tremendously over there. The company was a very conservative company and you can actually really feel it when it comes to the projects and the deadlines that were coming out, you know, uh, through, through the pipeline. I worked uh, at the Vanguard group as a Java developer and you know, it was my first time learning the Java programming language. I was a little nervous at first when I first started there because a lot of people who know about the tech industry realize that working in the tech industry can be very brutal, the hours are long, but the pay is pretty good. I was a little uh, worried that I don't know if I would have last very long, but overall, I never worked more than a 40 hour week over at Vanguard Group. Uh, their deadlines for projects were very conservative. In general, uh, it, it, was, it was a great place to work. One of the main uh, things that I always remembered about Vanguard was their conservative approach to, to finance. And when I worked at the Vanguard Group, I remember my team being the size of 13. At the hedge fund, I remember we had a team of three people to do the work 
uh, that at the Vanguard Group we had a team of 13 people. We were stretched very thin at the hedge fund. Their corporate culture was day and night different. The hedge fund went out of their way to try to get every edge they could. They were really investing in technology. Vanguard, they they value technology, but there was still on the underlying thesis. You can do things to make buying or indexing against the market easier, but at the end of the day, very few people are gonna actually have an edge over the market. So their goal was to make sure that they tied their funds closely to the market versus a hedge fund would um, go out of their way to try to beat the market. So how does this relate back into me keeping my money at Vanguard? Keep in mind, a hedge fund has a 2% management fee. That alone is a lot of money that you're losing over time. Beyond that, Remember what I said about Vanguard. They were a very conservative company. Their corporate culture was very conservative. I enjoyed my experience working at Vanguard because the people they hired were generally not your like, oh, I gotta, I gotta get out there. I gotta, I gotta crush these stocks. I gotta make all the other traders look like a bunch of babies, you know, stuff like that. That wasn't their corporate culture. Their corporate culture was a lot more relaxed versus the hedge fund was a lot more of a risk taking corporate culture. If you actually think about it, there's a reason why right they had to make sure they had to make an attempt to prove to people that their 2% fee was worth it in general uh, <laughs> you would see a culture that was a little bit more risk-taking I feel like if I'm gonna take risks I'm gonna do them in my own account I'm not gonna have you know a hedge fund do it for me or a hedge fund make mistakes and lose money for me because you know sometimes they're right and sometimes you're wrong uh, a lot of people don't realize this about hedge funds they go under all the time. So in that sense, if you want the security of knowing where your money is parked in a very stable conservative company, you know, Vanguard's a great company. So uh, that's kind of why I keep my retirement with them and a variety of other smaller accounts that I don't manage myself with them. Obviously, I'm not advertised by them, nor am I uh, getting any money to say this. I don't have any subscribers. No one from Vanguard will probably ever see this video, but it, that's just my take on the company. You know, I feel like for the money that I just don't want to trade, you know, I, I'd like to lock it up with them uh, because their fees are so good. And uh, in general, I think it's a good investment in the long run. Plus, having money out of my hands, uh, you know, if you recall uh, a month ago around Christmas time, I kept buying into the market. It makes me smarter about the sizes that I buy with. Who knows, if I had that extra money laying in those accounts, I might have taken them, bought larger positions. We could enter a bear market and I could be uh, stuck holding those positions for a longer period of time. That's kind of the reason why I let other people manage my money. It's a huge stress relief and it takes some of your worries away when it comes to where your money is and things of that nature. Overall, there's an enormous amount of truth to what uh, Jack Bogle did or, um, you know, said about finance and those fees really do add up and I'm a firm believer of keeping those costs down when it comes to my finances. You know, I, I believe in his legacy and he built an empire with the Vanguard Group. Other companies are now mimicking what he's created and what he's built. Charles Schwab is starting to come out with uh, items similar to what he's built. BlackRock has some new funds that are in direct competition with the Vanguard funds. Jack Bogle was uh, a great pioneer of this industry and built a great empire out of this idea of keeping management costs down. And one of the other things that I wanted to parlay is the fact that his net worth was only $80 million. So if you compare that to any other Wall Street Titan or anyone else in the same space who founded a, a company that's even remotely equivalent or on the same level as Jack Bogle did, they'd be worth in the hundreds of millions of dollars and the billions of dollars. He really just wasn't your typical greedy man. And it, it, it's really shocking when you think about it. His net worth was only $80 million for someone who um, built a company that had about $5.1 trillion under, under management. Anyway, that's it for me, Jack Bogle. Rest in peace.